to give you a little bit of background about this before we start the presentation. This, this actually started out as a student project. I was the student. I wrote a paper in a forensic anthropology class that was about cemeteries in Louisiana, and the paper really pertained to eminent domain in cemeteries. Um, because in Louisiana, the cemetery takes precedence, uh, excuse me, the living take precedence over the dead, so if the cemetery needs to be moved, it just gets moved. Um, so I started writing a paper, and I've spent more than a decade in coastal Louisiana with uh, working with Louisiana Sea Grant, which is a division of NOAA, um, working with um, coastal communities and working with sustainable coastal fisheries, sustainable coastal communities, and have seen a lot of cemeteries during that time and wondered one day, like, well, what happens to them because our coast is eroding so fast and the answer is not what we'd like it to be. So um, I'm Jessica Schechtsneider, <laughs> and um, my coworker on this project is Mary Manheim, and Maurice Walcott is handling the, the GIS work. So, so uh, bienvenue en Louisiane. Um, if you don't know much about Louisiana, we are a gumbo of people. We have so many backgrounds in our state. Um, Native American, French, Spanish, Cajun, German, Isleño, which are Canary Islanders. Um, Caribbean, African, Vietnamese, Portuguese. I mean, I can, can this is just a small section of what um, ethnicities we have in our state. I'm probably at least six of those backgrounds. Um, and Louisiana is the only state with parishes instead of counties, and that's kind of a confession to our heavy Catholic background. And down here at the bottom is a link to a um, video about this project, which I won't show today because it's a little too long, take up too much time, but once this is posted, you guys can go back and watch it. It's just an overview. So these are our coastal parishes um, outlined right here by the lighter blue. We have 20 um, coastal parishes of the 64. Um, this map right here is um, from, I believe, 2002, the Louisiana legislature redefined the coastal zone in 2012. It's actually much larger than this and extends now about 90 miles inland. These are a few of the hazards that we deal with in coastal Louisiana. Erosion, I'm sure you guys have seen that on the national news. Um, we have subsidence, which is sinking of the land. We deal, um, we're dealing with sea level rise. We, of course, as you all probably know, have hurricanes, um, storm surge from the hurricanes, and eventually climate change will affect us as well. Now, this is the shocker when I show this image to people. Is this is the cumulative storm path from 1842 through 2012. So basically, if a storm comes into a gulf, it's probably at least some part of it going to cross over Louisiana, which is right there. This is a major issue that we are dealing with. So 80% of the nation's coastal land loss occurs in coastal Louisiana. And it's estimated that the state loses an area about the size of a football field, so about an acre every 24 minutes. And in my work, I do um, some K through 12 education. And so when I talk to the kids, I tell them, so y'all know the saints. If the saints were playing in the Louisiana wetlands, the field would be gone by halftime. So that's really, it overcomes the children like, oh. So the reality of our coastal plight is the Gulf is going to take the land. This is a NOAA benchmark project, and a benchmark is just a, a marker of elevation. Um, this is one from 2011 that NOAA set. Um, so here's the, the benchmark set in the ground. And this is right here with the pole so you can kind of see the reference point um, of where it was set. And this is two and a half weeks later. So here's our benchmark. And as you can see, there's, no, there's apparently land still below it. 
but because of side subsidence and erosion, it's now open water and two and a half feet. And this is in Lower Plaquemines Parish, which is here. So this is where the benchmark was set. This is our projected land loss through the year 2050. So wherever there's red, that's land that we're going to lose. So my cemetery project. This is a picture of me out GPSing a European cemetery that's on an Indian shell midden down in lower, um, um, this is uh, in Cocodry, which is Terrebonne Parish. And so we started collecting the GPS points and photographing these cemeteries in an effort to historically document them. So we spent the last day and a half talking about preservation and how to save. So this is an effort to save something historically, digitally, that cannot be physically saved. To date, I've mapped 86 cemeteries across our coastal zone. This is just a subsection, and the each red dot is one that I've mapped. Um, so as you can see, the it's a big project. So how many cemeteries do you think that we have in Louisiana? <laughs> Thousands? That's just the bottom of our state. Um, so these are all, each red point is a point that USGS, which is US Geological Survey, it's a single point that they've mapped. Um, and so you see here our coastal zone, you see the ones that are in our coastal zone. Now we're not sure what people are doing over here in St. Tammany Parish because you can't see the parish for the cemetery. So we're trying to figure out that one. <laughs> But um, so you see our coastal zone with all the cemeteries. And so I've gotten to 86 of these now, but actually there's, there's over 500. So if the USGS has already mapped all those points, then what makes this different? Um, they've recorded single point locations. Unfortunately, a lot of the data was taken with cell phones because it was just, you know, people just trying to help and they go out and collect their one single point with their cell, their cell phone in their family cemetery and then USGS uploaded it. So what we're doing is we're going out and collecting the outer perimeter points. I walk the entire cemetery, the outer perimeter, and I collect points with a Trimble GPS along the whole way so that I can show the entire polygon of the cemetery and not just one point taken, you know, in a, any area there. Not, it's not standardized, the USGS points. So here, just a, you know, a demonstration. So if you have a single point, there it is. There's your cemetery. This happens to be Shania Caminada, which is down by Grand Isle, which is as, about as far down on our coast as you can go if, unless you're in Plaquemines Parish. But this is what I'm doing. So I'm going along the edge and taking points all along the outer edge. And this is the reason why. If you have a single point like this and the land erodes, you don't know how big your cemetery was. You can't, you can't prove how big the cemetery was unless you have, you know, maybe the, the, the records at the courthouse and they've got the land plotted out or whatever. But, so this is what I'm doing. So, and we're uploading all the information into a program called RCIS. We are building a map for the state of Louisiana that will eventually show all of this point data and it'll be available to the public. So, does anyone know this quote? <laughs> Uh, this is a photo that I took, oops, let me go back, that I took in the Upper Ninth Ward. This is actually Desire, and if you know the quote, then I'll leave you with that. So, Louisiana cemeteries. We call them the city of the dead, um, but something that most people don't know is um, the story 
stories about our above ground cemeteries are a mixture of folklore and fact. Our burial is, is above ground in a lot of places, but it's not due to the water table as most people expect it to be. It's more due to French and Spanish tradition carried from the old world into Louisiana. Um, we do have water table issues, but when our cemeteries are destroyed because of water, it's more than likely because of storm surge coming in and not water table pushing up. We have All Saints Day. Um, from what I understand, Louisiana is one of the only places where you can walk into a hardware store and ask for gray paint, and they will know exactly what you're asking for. Because we whitewash everything on a All Saints Day, and it's really kind of aligned with the uh, Mexican Day of the Dead. It's the day after Halloween, um, and a lot of times they will say, um, the priests or the pastors will say blessings over the graves, and they light um, candles, which are in these kind of containers. And also in Louisiana, we um, practice grave reuse. Um, these are some graves. Um, this is Nairn Cemetery, which is in that lower Plaquemines Parish that I showed you guys earlier. And when a, when a burial is put in place, by law, it has to be there for a year and a day in order um, for the next burial to be put in with it. You know, you see those big vaults in New Orleans and um, in other places in Louisiana, like these vaults, um, they can be used over and over and over again because in the back, in the inner back side of these, there's normally an ossuary. And after a year and a day, the remains are removed um, if they're not fully cremated by the heat and the humidity in Louisiana, then they are cremated and they're pushed towards the back and they normally go down into the ossuary. Um, and so that's how these graves can be used over and over and over again. And once the ossuary is full, sometimes they will put a sign at the, be um, the beginning or the front of the grave that says, do not open or cannot be reused. So I'm going to introduce you guys to some of Louisiana's coastal cemeteries. This is Shinya Caminata, which I showed you in the point representation. Um, it's a mass grave site. There are very few um, graves left in here. This one um, is one of just a few that are still intact. Most of them are completely destroyed like this by multiple storm surges just crossing it all the time. There's about um, 750 people in this site, um, 1,500 residents, um, well, 750 of the 1,500 residents of this town were killed in a hurricane in 1893. It's mostly women and children because at this point, the men, uh, this point in time, the men would go to New Orleans to work during the day, and so they didn't really have um, the warnings that we have now, so it was the women and children that were at home when the storm hit at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, this is Merrick Merritt. It's the former site of Merritt Plantation, and it's in St. Bernard. It was heavily destroyed by Hurricane Katrina. This picture was taken in 2012. So this is the... Um, This is the destruction that still exists as of 2012. Katrina was in 2005. Um, these right here are called FEMA replacement vaults. When a grave can't be identified, it's put into this metal casket and then put into this concrete vault and just numbered um, and then placed back in the cemetery. That's, you know, this vault right here is on its end from the force of the water. Um, there were multiple human remains just laying in this, uh, this plantation cemetery the day that I was there. This is Balance. It's in New Orleans. Um, here's your do not open because that ossuary is full. Um, and this one's very interesting because it's German and Jewish together. Um, and there were a lot of society tombs here which were which are built for, you know, groups who want to all bury together um, for mutual benefit. Um, 
This is La Duisse. This mound right here is an Indian shell midden, and it has a European settlement uh, near it with a European graveyard on top. Um, it's around Chauvin, Louisiana, and on the back side, many of these graves have already slid into the bayou. This is Cannon. Many tombs look like this after Katrina. This is from 2013. This tr uh, boat was lodged in the trees near the uh, graveyard, so we know that this area was underwater. This sign was in the beginning of the cemetery because many of these um, burials cannot be identified. There's no records to identify the people. Post Katrina and Rita, all burials now have to have a tube inside the, um, inside the coffin that identifies the remains so that they can be identified if they're uprooted by a storm. This is St. Vincent de Paul. It's in the upper ninth ward. A lot of the houses um, are flooded, but if you can see maybe right here on this one, there's a military X code where the military came in after the storm Katrina and put who was living and who was dead on the houses. And so you can still see a lot of those codes on the houses and on the buildings around this area. And as you can see, this one right here is crumbling, but a lot of the, the cemeteries in the Ninth Ward are, are crumbling like this with, with no one really to take care of them. This is Shalmat Battlefield. I have a particular affinity for this one. We introduce you to Miss Rebecca Wakeman, who is also known as Lions Wakeman and um, served with the New York Infantry. Uh, no one knew she was a woman until the time of her death when she served. <laughs> so um, it mostly Union soldiers in this cemetery, but it is one of our national cemeteries. It was also destroyed during Katrina. This back wall has recently um, been replaced. A lot of it fell over in the storm surge. So this is a quote by Mike Kidwell, who's the author of Bayou Farewell, uh, The Rich Life and Tragic Death of Louisiana's Cajun Coast. And it says, the bayou is swallowing the dead here, and you leave the dead where they rest. No one's touched them. They're getting a second burial at sea. 50, 60, 70 years ago, those people were buried on high ground. So Leeville. This is also known as Laporte. It's down at the base of the Leeville Bridge, right where you can cross over Highway 1 and go onto Grand Isle. When I first looked at this cemetery on Google Earth to decide, you know, where I needed to take the points at, I didn't see this concrete slab. So I'm not sure when this slab was poured, but apparently the um, caretaker of this cemetery doesn't realize that concrete's just going to make it subside faster. So it'll sink faster because now it's heavier. And I don't think they really realized that when they decided to restore it. A lot of these headstones are just listed as unknown. They don't know who's buried here. But some of them, like this one, do um, have the name and birth and death date. The other side of this one does. And as you can see, it's so close to the water that we have shrimp boats in the background. Um, so I'm not really sure, you know, who decided this was a good idea to pour concrete on top of it, but many of these are already in the marsh. And so, unfortunately, this was not a good preservation technique. <laughs> so what's really at stake here? These are a subsection of the, some of the cemeteries that I've taken points on. So the yellow is the parish boundary. 
the whites are the points that, um, if you zoom in, you can see all the perimeter points, but the white's just the single point location. So there's the projected land loss that I showed you that will happen through 2050. And as you can see, some of the ones down here will be gone. But here's the country. This is our relative sea level rise of 2.5 feet that they expect Louisiana to get by 2050. Not just the cemeteries that are gone, I mean half our, half the southeast section of our state will be gone. But look at just the ones that I've mapped. And just think there's over 500 of them. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs>